And I've heard some very idiotic things about being said, even by people of religion. I've met people that lead entire communities, calling themselves imams. I don't call them imams. They'll say, you know, we like to keep women in their place. They say things like that. And I say, I don't know what religion you follow. But that's not the religion of our Messenger The open policy of our Prophet is لا تضربوا إما Allah. Don't hit the female slaves of Allah. It's clear and explicit. Don't hit them. So we have to reconcile those two. I, again, this is not a lecture about Surah An-Nisa, but this is about Rajam. It's tied together. So I want to show you how they're tied together. A husband is afraid. Is a husband afraid that the wife didn't put salt in the food? Is the husband afraid that the wife forgot to pay the electricity bill? Is the husband afraid that she didn't do the laundry? No, he's upset. The word in the ayah is not that you're, that you're upset with your spouse because of her uprising. It's because you're afraid of her uprising. That changes everything. Because actually, khawf, what is the only thing a man is afraid of? His wife being with anyone else. And he has no evidence, he's just afraid of it. He just notices she's putting a little extra makeup on when she leaves. He notices that she's smiling a lot when she's texting. He notices things and it's scaring him. It's messing with him. You understand? Now is that a small thing or a big thing? It's a big thing because if that is true, if that is true, then that is war against Allah and His Messenger. Remember we established that already? So she's not just doing something that's against her husband, she is now an enemy to Allah and His Messenger Now the husband doesn't have four witnesses and he doesn't have any other witnesses. But the husband, is, he knows his wife. A husband knows his wife. He knows something's changing. He knows something's up. He knows when she's hiding something. And he can tell and he's getting more and more and more upset. And things get to a point, and by the way, advise them. And he's so disgusted whether he can't even sleep in the same bed. Separate the bed from them. Why would you separate your bed from your wife? Because she cooked too much food or too little food? Because you're so disturbed by the idea that she's interested in somebody else. But when things come to a point where you're almost 100% sure that she's doing something wrong, the only thing left now is you will catch her. But you're 90% already there. Then you have to try to save her life. Because if you catch her, and you testify, what's going to happen to her? Either she will be killed in this dunya or she will burn in hellfire forever in the akhirah. So in order to save her life, you, if you hit her, it's okay. What I'm saying is the ayah about hitting women is not under usual circumstances. It's about a woman who's suspected of cheating on her husband. And it's, been, it's escalated. And the only thing after that is, you know, worst case scenario. Which is now, which, which is the worst case scenario? Surah An-Nur. So you'll notice things in Surah An-Nisa, are everything built up and then the completion of those issues is Surah An-Nur. We saw that with the subject of zina also, right? So now, now that's what's coming here. So now he testifies, he swears four times by Allah that she has done what I saw, said she did. And this is hard for me to explain because I did just heard a baby, because just a baby, he won't remember. But you know, what does it mean that you witness something? I'll try to use adult language without helping children understand too much. So just understand what I'm saying without me spelling everything out. If you saw pe pe two people together, that's not enough. If you saw people, pe two people together inside of a bed or a bedroom, that's not enough. You have to literally see two organs. And if you didn't see that, you didn't see anything. That's how serious it is, the witness. That's how the witness is. You know, and that's what the fuqaha would discuss because you cannot just accuse someone. That's how much benefit of the doubt this religion gives. It's incredible. People think this is barbaric. This is incredible. This is, this is a rahmah from Allah Azza wa Jal that he doesn't allow that situation to happen. Now, if a husband has come, even if she did that, he doesn't want her to be killed unless he's, like, he's hurt so much because a, a wife is someone you love. But you know, when a husband and wife have this problem, then as intense as that love used to be, that turns into intense hate. And he, he can't forgive her. He can't let her go. Now there is in Islam forgiveness. And if you can forgive someone, even if he divorces her, he could divorce her and not testify against her. That's possible. And that's just him forgiving her. But he can't. He wants revenge. He wants, her to, see, he wants to see her punished. And Allah in this case, 
actually allows it and didn't even say it's better if you forgive. You know, in every other case, when somebody does something wrong to you, what does Allah say first? It's better if you what? Forgive. If you forgive, it's closer to taqwa. You know? Before that, if you take revenge, then there's no harm against you. But if you forgave, it would be better for you. Now, if he's willing to testify four times, is he forgiving or taking revenge? He's taking revenge. But Allah does not say in these ayat what? But if he forgave, it would be better. Why not? Because this was not first and foremost a crime against him. This was war against Allah and his. Messenger وسلم, and this is part of the ghadab of Allah, the anger of Allah, that He doesn't even recommend forgiveness in this passage. That doesn't even come up. So He says that He has to testify four times swearing by Allah, إِنَّهُ لَمِنَ الصَّادِقِينَ Absolutely, He truly is from those that are telling the truth. I saw this, I saw this, I swear by Allah, swear by Allah, swear by Allah, swear by Allah, four times. Why does He have to testify four times? Because He's equaling four witnesses. Well, then he has to, to give a fifth oath. And what's the khamisa to? That the curse of Allah should be on him. If it is the case that he's from those who are lying. If he's lying about this, he openly says, May Allah curse me. Oof. Now, on the other hand, there's this, this side, this man is standing testifying against his wife. And on that side, on the defendant side, is the wife. Her turn to testify. And the punishment, Allah will remove the punishment from her. He will push the punishment away from her. And If that she would testify four times swearing to Allah, إِنَّهُ لَمِنَ الْكَاذِبِينَ He's lying. I swear by Allah. I swear by Allah. I swear by Allah. I swear by Allah. He's lying. She has to testify equal number of times against him. But four is not enough. You have to do a fifth time. وَالْخَامِسَةَ And the fifth time, أَنَّ غَضَبَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْهَا That the anger of Allah should fall upon her. إِنْ كَانَ مِنَ الصَّادِقِينَ If, he, if it, he happens to be the one telling the truth. Now when he asked the fifth time, he said the لَعْنَ of Allah. When she asked, it was the Ghadab of Allah. The, so she, he asked, if I'm not telling the truth, then may the curse of Allah be on me. And when she asked, it was may the anger of Allah be on me. What's the difference? Why not use the same language? As a matter of fact, the worst thing you can do to a husband, or to, sorry, to a wife, is to accuse her of this. There is no greater curse a woman can live then be known in society as somebody who committed zina. He's brought it in public, hasn't he? Now she's done zina in her private life or something, that's something else. But if she's been publicly accused, family knows about it, friends know about it, co-workers know about it, society knows about it, the newspaper has it, the entire courtroom sitting there, the community. She's humiliated. There is no bigger curse, just the way people look at her from that day on, even if she's innocent. The way people look at her is going to be different. And so he's, by coming out like this, he has actually put a kind of curse on her. And if he's doing this wrongfully, then he deserves a curse himself. But not just the curse from the people, because he testified by Allah, he manipulated the word of Allah, then he shouldn't just get the curse of the people, he should get Allahi alayhi. The curse of Allah should be on him. On the other side is the woman who doesn't say, may the curse of Allah be on me. She says, may the anger of Allah be on me. I keep telling you over and over again, if somebody's committed this act, who have they actually violated against? Allah and His Messenger وسلم, And more important, most importantly, Allah Himself. And if she's brought upon the wrath of Allah, and she's willing to call Allah's name four times and say, I'm okay with the anger of Allah. She's already made Allah angry with her act, then she should say that she's okay with it. Let her say it herself. And on the other hand, you know what she's done to her husband. She hasn't put a curse on her husband, but she's caused her husband more anger than he's ever experienced in his life. So it's not just Allah, but the anger of her husband. But now she deserves the anger of Allah because she called on Allah. She called on Allah. Now you could save your life. So you don't have to get the stoning. You could just 
Take this testimony and live your life, at least in this world. And there was a woman, in fact, who was accused in the seal of the Prophet ﷺ, and her turn came to say, I didn't do it. And she almost didn't testify. But then she went ahead and she said, I swear he's made the curse, made the anger of Allah be on me. And she wasn't punished, you know, at least not in this world, right? The first half of this passage was people who have committed this mistake and they are not married. This passage that we just discussed is the second one, which is concluding with people who are married. The first one, Allah Azza wa Jal, by the time he ended it, إِلَّا الَّذِينَ تَابُوا مِن بَعْدِ ذَلِكَ وَأَصْلَحُوا even at the end of that, Allah said, except those who make tawbah. So at the end of the discussion of punishment, Allah keeps bringing up His mercy, His forgiveness, opportunity to make tawbah, etc. Yeah? Now this happens. And at the end of this, He says, وَلَوْلَا فَضْلُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ وَرَحْمَتُهُ Had it not been for the extra favor of Allah on you people, and had it not been for His mercy, now this is actually وَجَوَابُ لَوْلَا مَحْذُوف لِقَصْدِ تَهْوِيلِ مَضْمُونِهِ You know, sometimes this is, you know, it's grammar language, but let me tell you what it means in simple, simple English. If I wasn't your mother, you know, if I didn't have a flight right now, you don't say anything more. You know why you don't say anything more? Because what you're going to say is so scary and you want to leave it to the imagination of the person that you're talking to. You don't even want to know. Oh, had you come five more minutes late. Oh my God. So intensely angry that it can't even be put in words. Had it not been for the favor of Allah on you people, and had it not been for His mercy, <laughs> He stops there. He, he doesn't finish it. He doesn't finish it. Because fahisha, these mistakes that Allah is willing to forgive, are so serious, they are so heavy, that had it not been for this extra favor that Allah has given this ummah, and the rahmah that Allah has given this ummah, we would have been annihilated, destroyed as a result of this. In ways that can't even be described. In ways that are beyond words. You know, you know sometimes they say, اللحظ أصدق إنباءً من اللفظ Or they say, رُبَّ سُكُو تَبْلَقُ مِن كَلَام Sometimes just observation is more powerful than words. Sometimes silence says a lot more than speech does. That's what Allah does here. Wa anna Allah tawabun hakim, and even anna Allah tawabun hakim is not complete. Had it not been for the extra favor of Allah on you and His rahmah, His mercy, His love, and His care, and that Allah continually accepts tawbah and is full of wisdom and makes final decisions in your favor even, makes the wisest of decisions, had it not been for that, dot, 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 you would have been done for. So now two halves of this passage, they both end with Allah, and in the first case, come back and make tawbah. And in the second case, you are so lucky He's merciful. Oh, you are so fortunate that He has tawbah for you. Because this is a favor Allah has given to the people, that He's opened that door of tawbah.